Hi, hello, my name is Anna. If you're new here, I'm a final year PhD student studying nanomedicine and drug delivery at the University of British Columbia. In today's video, I'm going to be answering some frequently asked questions that I've been receiving in my Instagram DMs and also a few comments that have been left in the YouTube comment section of my videos. So I just thought it would be really helpful for me to share these answers with you just in case you're also um, wondering about the same thing or worried about the same types of things. Just a disclaimer first of all this is just my opinion based off of my own experience getting into the pharmaceutical sciences program at UBC in Canada take it as you may and let's go let's let's get right into it okay so this is regarding reaching out to supervisors and application like how that works and stuff so I didn't even know this but apparently some of my lab mates didn't even reach out to our boss our supervisor beforehand they just simply applied using the grad student portal there is on the UBC website they applied directly through there kind of listed out their rankings in terms of like which professors they would be interested in joining or working with and then actually the boss contacted them and asked if they would like to interview so I did not know that this was an option because for me, I started back in 2017 in the master's program and I actually reached out to our boss, I think like the fall before that. So almost like basically like le slightly less than a year before the start date. So I reached out to him by cold email. What they call is like a cold email is just like an email that you use to contact someone without any like previous connections or introductions like you're just emailing them as a stranger that's what they call a cold email so I sent my current boss a cold email back in October slash November of 2016 he got back to me within minutes because that's how fast he is at responding to set up an interview with me honestly I didn't even know like oh my gosh I was so I didn't know anything about grad school back then so like a lot of you are already like way farther ahead than I ever was in in terms of like preparation for grad school because I didn't even know I was being invited to an interview like I just showed up to his office in jeans and like a really casual like t-shirt type situation but basically I met up with him then he told me to go and actually apply to the program there was a lot of like confusion on my end of what that meant because he didn't specifically say that he would like to take me on as a student he just said that I should apply to the program and put him as like you know like my choice for for supervisor the way I interpreted that was that okay he interviewed me I may have a chance at getting into the program but ultimately he's still interviewing other people so there's a chance that he won't want to take me and come around April May that year of 2017 I got the email from the pharmaceutical sciences program saying that I've been accepted and even at this time I didn't even know who my supervisor was and then I contacted Dr. Lee and I was like okay like I got into the program like am I in your lab and he said like, yes yes the offer was from me so you can cold email the supervisor beforehand this gives the supervisor and yourself a chance to get to know each other before formally applying to the program and you know you will have to put your selection of like which supervisor you would like to be matched with and then on the supervisors and they will see all of the applicants I think maybe all the applicants or maybe just like they only see the applicants that have indicated that they're interested in joining their lab I'm not completely sure about that either way like they will see your application and they will see that you have indicated that you're interested in joining their lab and then it's up to them whether or not to extend an offer to you so theoretically you can get into the program without contacting your supervisor or the person that you're interested in first you can do that because a few of my lab mates have gone in that way but I think that like to save time and to save money because applications cost money. It is beneficial to reach out to the person that you're interested in working for first to set up an interview to see if you can get an interview and then go from there. That's personally like the route that I took because I didn't even know that there was the other option. <laughs> but I, I would have done that anyways because I want to kind of meet him and like get a sense of the type of person he is and stuff before applying. So that's how I did it. 
So in terms of like when you should reach out to the potential supervisor with your CV and your cover letter and to state like an interest in joining their lab, I think this depends greatly on where you're at when you plan to start because you don't want to reach out to them too soon when you haven't, you know, finished your degree yet or like you have a long way to go or you're planning to do some internship placements or volunteer placements that you haven't actually done yet but you also don't want to reach out too late because you don't want to like you know like miss the application deadline if you want to start in a specific year so i think it's like a few months before the application deadline is approaching is a good time to reach out to them so for my case i reached out to dr lee in october november ish and the application deadline that year i believe was in february for the following year does that make sense so for example like if we're looking at 2021 right now the application is already open for 2022 enrollment so if this were me four or five years ago i would have reached out to dr lee around this time before the application deadline which was in february so that i could get in in 2022 does that make sense i think that makes sense yeah it really depends how comfortable you're feeling with your current resume slash CV. If you think that this is like the best that it's gonna get and you're comfortable with this before you try to get into a grad program, then I think you should send your cold email with your CV attached and stuff. Another question that I've been getting a lot in my inbox and DMs is about the stipend and like how much we get paid and what makes up your stipend and stuff. So currently for our UBC, pharmaceutical sciences program grad students get a minimum of i believe 27,500 canadian dollars a year this can be like a number of things so like this this requirement is set by the grad student and postdoctoral services i think so basically it's set by like a higher level and supervisors or PIs, they have a number of ways that they can meet this. Basically, the majority of my PhD, a master's PhD grad school experience, I was being paid like a portion by Dr. Lee's grant and a portion by my TAing. So the TA made up like a certain chunk of that 27,000. Back then when I started, I think it was only like 25,000. So there's been a raise um, since I've been here. That made up like a percentage of the amounts I would get in stipends the rest would come from dr lee's grants so there are also other options that are available so i know of the ubc like the four-year doctoral fellowship you can apply for that as well so then this will cover a part of your stipend but then i think you also have to ta in order to kind of make up for that so basically you're guaranteed a twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollar yearly stipend and just kind of like the ratio of where that comes from will depend on your supervisor's budget. So some supervisors, like they don't want you to TA because they want you to focus on your research. So they will pay for the whole thing while other supervisors are more comfortable with you doing like TA work. So then your TA work will make up part of your stipend and then they'll make up the rest. And then if you get like any kind of like big national scholarships such as from CIHR or from NSERC then they'll make up your stipend so for example I don't even know how much I'm getting paid now because since I got the stipend from CIHR then I'm not earning money from Dr. Lee anymore um, I'm earning it straight from the Canadian government and that's slightly higher I, th I don't even I should know how much I'm getting paid but I don't and then if I choose to continue to do TA work then that amount that I make will just pay on top of that. I think if you're like an international student, it's definitely possible because you, you get a stipend. I think it's like possible for you to get by with the stipend that we have but the cost of living in Vancouver is super high rent is super high food is super high so it might be a little bit tight so it's always good to you know figure out what kind of scholarships you can apply for so that it can help you with your payments and stuff and with, with your budgeting and everything but yeah as grad students we do get a stipend but I believe master students get paid slightly less than PhD students but yeah that's in terms of stipend so so the next question that I get asked pretty often is about 
kind of like the prerequisites of what you had to have or what I had when I first joined pharmaceutical sciences and how big that learning curve was for me. So I did a background in chemistry and the learning curve was pretty big for me at the beginning because I had no knowledge about anything like nanomedicine or like in vivo related or like anything like biology or immunology and stuff. Over the years, I found that because, you know, I'm in group meeting and I'm reading more and I'm going to the seminars that we have to attend and I'm going to conferences and just talking with my PI and like my lab mates and stuff. Like, it's definitely really nice to learn a different field and it happened pretty naturally because you're just thrown into there. So I think it's definitely possible and like highly encouraged to be coming into pharmaceutical sciences with like a diverse kind of background and don't worry about that. And Another aspect of this is with regards to the TA work that we do in pharmaceutical sciences. Our faculty just started like a bachelor's of pharmaceutical sciences program. We don't really have any teaching components yet. So I know that it's in the works and I think that in the future years there will be more teaching requirements and teaching opportunities for grad students but as of right now we are just TAing for the PharmD program which is a pharmacy program the grad students that make up the pharmaceutical sciences like society is so diverse in terms of like background because we have like engineers coming in chemists people that studied like you know biology immunology like all basically all kinds of backgrounds there's not like a standard standardized like teaching that we can do for the PharmD program because like the PharmD program is very like clinical and very specific in terms of like the course material. So for teaching assistantship, our responsibilities include like exam and vigilation. So we're monitoring the students as they take their exams. Um, we're marking their exams because marking like we just need to follow a specific like answer and make sure that everything's there and give them marks. We assist with like setting up different things like setting up like clinical labs and everything so it's all like very administrative heavy so you don't have to have a specific set of background in order to do some TA work so don't worry about that if you're worried about that so that is all in terms of like the re really commonly asked questions that I've been receiving I hope this video helped and I'm not really good at responding to Instagram DMs so I'm really sorry if you know I've just left you unread for a little bit if i see any more like really commonly asked questions i will pull out my camera and answer it again like this uh let me know in the comments if you have any other questions that you really want me to answer or slash help out with and best of luck with all of your applications and i'll see you in the next one bye